what's up everyone, Game Dad here, and it is that time of year again. It is time to do a new room tour for 2021. So, this time I decided I would go kind of vlog style with it and just give you guys a tour of the room. Not a ton has changed since last year. I've definitely added more games to the collection, done some new arcade stuff, and I'm just going to take you through and show you what we got. But before we do that, if you are new to the channel, please go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as that little notification bell so you can alert every time I got a new video coming out. Now, without further ado, sit back and enjoy my 2021 game room tour. So for the start of this tour, I figured we would just start right with the games. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at all of the Game Gear games we got up top here. I kind of have everything separated by console and alphabetical. From there, we're going into the Atari Lynx games, as well as Neo Geo Pocket and Pocket Color. Then, of course, you know, some of the greatest consoles ever. We have the Gamecom, R Zone, and then moving on, you know, just basic ones like Wonderswan Color, Crystal, Engage. Gotta love that uh, taco game console. Right here, we have some of the Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. Moving on down the line, there is our Game Boy games. Then if we go down to the next shelf, some more Game Boy Advance. Kind of just going back and forth, showing you guys what there is. We also got some of the Game Boy Advanced video cartridges. Then we got Virtual Boy. I'm getting very close to a full set. It's a nice small console, so it's easy to do. Then we've got DS over there. Then if we come back down over here, we've got more DS, 3DS, PlayStation Vita, Got a couple of UMD videos there, and then the PSP collection. Not a very big collection, but still a fun console. Got the 3DO, Turbo Graphics. Got the Sega Master System card games right there. Then you can see we have Sega CD. Moving back down the list here, we have Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast, and everyone's favorite of all time, we have the Philips CDI. I bought pretty much the entire collection of CDI stuff that I have, all from my buddy John Riggs. So he had that for sale a couple years ago, picked that up, added to the collection. As you can see, we have a bunch of NES. Most of these are all in alphabetical order, but some of the more expensive boxed ones, not anything super rare or expensive, but like right here, we have the RC Pro M2. I've got my Mighty Final Fight. Then we got a couple more right here. Got a Snow Brothers. So that one's nice. And Shatterhand. Moving down the list, we have some more NES games. And I also have homebrews and stuff mixed into there. Got uh, this nice little Golden 250 combo cart for the NES. Got a couple more in protective sleeves. Right there, we've got Bucky O'Hare. And then moving down the line, we've got a Complete in Box, Paperboy 2, Maniac Mansion, and Bard's Tale. Even more NES. As it stands right now, this is the largest piece of the collection, is NES games. And I believe I have around half of the NES collection currently. I don't really go for box sets or anything like that, because I don't have the room for it, but... There we go. Got a variant of Zelda. Kind of enjoy that one. Then we're moving on to Super Nintendo. More Super Nintendo over there. I know it's kind of hard to see some of the different titles, but that's all right. Got MC Lars, the video game right there. There's my Super Famicom N64. I do have the spine labels on all of those, except for ones that are homebrews, like right here. We've got 40 Winks. That one's pretty fun. And then moving down the list, got some more N64. I'm getting pretty close to a full set of N64 as well. This one I really like. This is a really cool homebrew. So, clear shell, but this is Super Mario 64 and Luigi. This is a split-screen mod so that two players can do couch co-op on Mario 64. And moving right along, we of course have the microwave and mini fridge. That way if you need drinks or snacks while you're in the cave. And up top here, we have some of my Commodore 64 Discit games. And then just my C64 games, Atari 7800, ColecoVision. Magnavox Odyssey 2, Intellivision, lots of 2600 games. 
then 5200. Got a nice little stack of the Nintendo Famicom Disk System games there. There's my Famicom collection. Got the Atari Jaguar, Sega Master System. Then we got a bunch of stuff for Genesis. Go back over here, we got a little bit more Genesis games. Luigi, my main bro. Then, moving on, we have the GameCube. I need to install some more lights up here. Then we have the Nintendo Wii, the Wii U, and then starts the Switch collection. I did not realize how big my Switch collection is getting, but it's fun to uh, see that wall of red. Now, any of those games that I got flipped out are ones that I haven't actually installed on the Switch yet. Just a couple of recent pickups there. Okay, then we're moving on. We have PS1. That continues down the line. I like to do custom cases, make it all look nice on the shelf. Then we move on to PS2. Very colorful. More PS2. PS3. The start of PS4 at the end over there. Then a bunch more PS4 right here. Moving into small but growing PS5 collection. This is a phenomenal console. I just finished this one right here. Immortals Phoenix Rising. Got the platinum on that. Then we have the OG Xbox. More of it down there. Xbox 360. I think that's probably my second largest collection is the 360. I got a lot of stuff for that. That was a really fun console generation. Then moving on to Xbox One. And a little bit more Xbox One. And then the only way to differentiate them, they don't say Xbox One, they say Xbox. There are the Series X games that I have. Then a couple of uh, card binders. Anyone that is familiar with the channel knows that I like super rare games, so I've been collecting all their trading cards as well. So that is everything on game wall number one. And moving over, everything on game wall number two. And moving on from there, see a big old pile of stuff and boxes. These are all repairs that I'm doing either for myself or for my buddy Corey over at Retro Attack Games. And he is actually selling things online now. So make sure you hit up RetroAttackGames.com. That is games with a Z. Here we have the Time Crisis 3 that I feel like I have been working on for eons now. Everything works except for that stinking screen. I am working on it. I am getting there. And that is what that screen over there is for. Hopefully I can finally get the tube swap done. My buddy Thor was uh, going through and... He recapped the motherboard for it, but that tube, I think, is dead. Then we have the Nicktoons Racing. This still needs a little bit more love. It definitely works and turns on now, but the audio is still not totally there. Um, and I just need to clean up the steering wheel controls a bit. Now, right here, this is where I typically do all of the unboxings. Anytime I'm repairing stuff or streaming repairs, anything like that, that's where I get that going. Here is the desk. So we got a 34 inch uh, LG ultra wide there. Got the stream deck and the Corsair RGB Virtuoso SEs right there for when I'm streaming. Rocking all Razer products. Got that Goliathus mouse pad, the Mamba Elite mouse and the Huntsman Elite keyboard. There's the PC. It's about a year and a half old now, but rocking a uh, Ryzen 9 3900X in there and an RTX 2060, no, 2070 Super. Down here, that is what controls the whole audio system for the cave. So we are running several thousand watts. It's going into that mixer right there, and it is going into those speakers over there, and I'll show those again in a minute. Now, moving on to the retro area, we got three CRTs here controlling various consoles. Wanted to make sure they were split up enough so I didn't get any kind of signal degradation, especially with the older stuff. With that older stuff, I only have old consoles running through it. So right here, you can see I'm running Sub Hunt on the Intellivision right there. Then I've also got my Coleco and its Intellivision add-on, or I believe that's the Atari 2600 add-on. 
Now moving down here on this console, I have some more retro stuff. As you can see, that's the PS1 Splash. And right here, we've got the NES, the Super NES. We have the Sharp Twin Famicom. That was another pickup from uh, John Riggs because my original disk drive died. So I picked up a twin. We have my Super Famicom, my Odyssey 2. Okay, it's old, but it is an awesome console. Got my TurboGrafx-16, PS1, 3DO. Again, there is that mixer for the audio. It's total overkill, but that is a byproduct of my band days. And I just hooked it up to be able to watch movies and play games. Got my 2600 Vader, Atari Jaguar, Atari 5200, which was previously the largest console I owned. We'll get to the new largest console I own in just a moment. Got my Tower of Power right there with my Genesis 32X and Sega CD. Got my gold N64, Sega Saturn, and that's what's running up there on that CRT. And there is my CDI, my Fatboy PS2, Sega Master System, Atari 7800. And then up here on the top, got a billion remotes for different TVs. Got that Retron 77. And yeah, that is that whole little retro entertainment center right there. Now, a new addition from last year is this guy right here. This is the Commodore 64 monitor and a Commodore 128. Then we also got its cassette drive there and its 1541 five and a quarter floppy. Very excited to have that in the collection. And right here, we even have the Oculus Quest 2 phenomenal VR console. Digging that. Now here we have the more modern area, and that is a 70 inch Vizio running 4K on there. And let's go ahead and just start at the top right here. Got a couple network switches, that way everything is actually hardwired instead of running off Wi-Fi. Got my switch right there. Various controllers for the switch, various remotes to control everything. Got my 360 connect, my Xbox One connect. A crap ton of different uh, HDMI switches. Got my PS4 camera, PS3 camera, and got my various sensor bars, things like that. Got a Retron 5 right there. Picked these up recently. It is the UK and US versions of the Mario Bros. Game & Watch. I am super hoping that they make more of those because it's a really cool premise. And if they made a Zelda one, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. Now, moving down right here, we have the PS4 with PSVR. There's its little CPU thing on the side. Got a pair of Astro A50 wireless back there. Some controllers. Down here is all the PS3 stuff. Then we go down here, we got my PS2 Slim. And some of these retro consoles that are over on this side are actually running off of HDMI. So there's the PS2, the Wii U, my Pikachu in 64. Moving down, we got Dreamcast, OG Xbox. Then we have the 360, GameCube, and Wii. There's my Xbox One X. And the newest additions to the console family, we have the Series X right there. And what is now the largest console I own, the PS5. That thing is a beefy boy. I'm a large dude, and this is my hand in comparison to it. This console is freaking huge, but I'm glad it can lay on its side. From there, we are moving into the arcade area. Sorry if the screens look weird, they're old CRTs and that happens. This is the Simpsons Arcade. Fully restored this thing, it needed everything. It was not in good shape. So I redid all of the artwork. If you're wondering where I got it, I believe the store was Escape Pod and they sell full sets of artwork. So I got the new marquee, I got all the tea molding from them. Control panel overlay, all that stuff. And then from uh, Suzo Hap, I ordered brand new coin doors and assemblies. I'll go ahead and uh, show you guys what it looks like inside of here. Nice shiny new assemblies. Excellent. Nice fresh keys. Then moving on, this was the very first arcade machine that I ever had. And that is the Street Fighter II Champion Edition. I had to do a lot of restoration on this one as well. And as you can see, it is very dark right now, so I am probably going to end up needing to do a recap on that monitor again, make it look better. 
Then we got Make Tracks, Donkey Kong Jr. I got a two-slot Neo Geo right there, but I'm running a uh, multi-cart in it because carts for that thing are stupid expensive. Here is my Shinobi. It needs a lot of TLC, but it plays and it looks awesome doing it. Now starting down here, these are all of my board games and all of my strategy guides and game books and all that stuff. The candy machine that my daughters constantly raid, that's why it's empty. Then got a bunch of different TV shows and stuff. Love it or hate it, this is absolutely my favorite TV show of all time, Big Bang Theory. I own the complete series on Blu-ray and don't regret it for a second. More strategy guides. Moving up here, these are my Tiger handhelds. Got a couple of the uh, Gear VR headsets right there, my Superboy. Moving up, there is my R-Zone, my Gamecom, my Nomad here on the bottom with a modded Game Gear up top. Got my little Moga controller, my Vita. This is the special edition PSP for Metal Gear, for uh, Peace Walker, I believe. Then we have my Atari Lynx 1 and 2, Neo Geo Pocket, and that is the color version. Engage. Then moving up here, we have some of my gaming watches and pretty much every iteration of the DS that has come out, including multiple colors and variations of Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP. There are my 3DSs. Oh, there is my Wonder Swan. Then moving over here, I do like Legos, things like that. This one was actually Mega Blocks, but there we have the USS Enterprise NCC-1701. And this one is kind of fun. The engines actually will uh, light up. Up there, this was a gift from one of my former students. And that is the NES Lego set. That was super fun. I did a build of that on stream. And then moving up. We just have various boxes, things like that, that a lot of the consoles came in. This is my whole area of marquees and lights for various consoles. Then we got some more box stuff over here. More boxes, more boxes. And then moving through here, we have all the various drum kits and different things. Right here, I have some uh, custom artwork that one of my former students painted. Got a Mario puzzle. Some more Legos right here. So we got a Klingon cruiser. We have Pose X-Wing over there. Along with these shelves, got my Virtual Boy on its stand. Got a Halo ship right there. Some memorabilia. All my Super Rare Games Collector's Edition boxes. All of the mini consoles, let's see, this one is the PS1 Mini, this one is the Genesis Mini, the Super Nintendo Mini, the NES Mini, and this is my case for my Switch for when I take the whole console, and that's my portable case. If you do not have a Satisfy Grip, get one. It is the best handheld and case you can get, in my opinion anyways. My Labo kits, some various other boxes. Up there, complete in box. The one on the left is the Jungle Green N64. One on the right is the Smoke Gray N64. Then I've got a Intellivision 2, an old computer, some bags, and then all these consoles, with the exception of the Turbo Graphics Mini, are all consoles that are in need of repair. I have a massive backlog of repair stuff. Moving along, more random boxes, things like that. Got my Series X box and my uh, Quest 2 box up there. Blank cases for the custom cases that I do. Got the projector right there. It's not 4K or anything like that, but it is very high quality and did a lot of research on it to make sure that it would still look good even in fluorescent lighting. So if you are interested, it is an Epson and the model number is an EX9200. Works great. The bulbs are cheap, which is key. As you can see, we got more boxes. Got the box for that NCC1701 over there. PS5 box. I did, of course, get the physical edition because physical for life, obviously. More stuff. 
got the Miracle Piano back there. Got the boxes for all the mini consoles. And then of course, there is the screen for the projector. That way we can rock 128 inches when it's movie night. Now here is just one big overview of the man cave and everything that is in it. This is a three car garage that has been converted into the man cave. This was another big change. I added extra seating compared to what I had before. Buddy at work was getting rid of these and said I could just have them. So I took them. This is an excellent place to just come chill and hang out and eventually even be able to do that with friends again. So there you have it, everyone. That is my 2021 game room tour. Now, like I said, not much has changed in the past year. Obviously, with the pandemic, you know, finances definitely took a hit. I was doing fine in the beginning of the year, and they've taken a hit over time. Of course, everything will get back to normal eventually, and it'll be nice to be able to have people over again, do some Let's Plays, things like that. But in the interim, this is what the cave looks like now. Now, normally I don't set up like any kind of goals or anything like that, but something that I would like to do that I've been thinking about for several months now, and hopefully I'll be able to do it over this next year, is I would love to do a big overhaul of the man cave. So that white book shelf case thingy where I have all the retro consoles and then my desk, I'd like to get rid of those. I would actually like to build something custom like what I did with that one and make it a little more compact and just look a little bit nicer. It looks kind of hodgepodge to me right now. And then one big thing that I want to do, as you guys can see, there is no paint and the sheetrock is not even done over there. So that's one big thing I'd like to do. It'll be a huge undertaking, but I would actually like to completely gut the man cave and I would actually like to just totally finish everything. I want paint, I want floor, I want everything just redone in here. So hopefully 2021 will bring the ability to be able to do that. Who knows, never know what the future holds, but hopefully as things get better with the world, then things will get better with everything else. Uh, for those of you that know, I actually own a martial arts school. So as you can imagine during the pandemic, that has definitely taken a hit, but you know, I have really loyal students and a really great community. So hopefully we'll be able to get that back up to where it was again. And that will help be able to realize things that I want to do here. So we will see what happens in 2021 and what the future holds. Now, if you guys like today's video, please let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, please be sure to also hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as that little notification bell so you can alert every time I got a new video coming out. Now, as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later.